Welcome to this global forum session on the prime blueprint for SEG integration. Uh, joining me on the panel today and representing our global prime community are Yapri Anadol from Dubai Business School, Evgenia Pashkovich of IBS Ranepa International Business School, Moscow, Mohan Avari of Nottingham University Business School, Malaysia campus, and Laura Steele from Queen's Management School in Belfast, Northern Ireland, United Kingdom. Just to recap, the Prime Blueprint was published in 2020, and it was almost five years after the adoption of the SDGs by the UN. And it's an output of the Prime Champions Group. And it's intended for use both in Prime and within the wider responsible management education community. Now, the purpose of this session is to get a range of perspectives on using the blueprint from prime champions in different parts of the world. Because we all know context matters and what's happening in uh, Europe is not the same as Asia or the Middle East or Africa. Now the format of the session will be as follows. Uh, first of all, I'm going to invite each of the panel members to introduce themselves. Um, I will then provide colleagues with a recap, a brief summary of what the blueprint's about, because within the audience, there will be people who are familiar with it already and others that are less so. And after that, I'm going to ask each of our distinguished guests to share their personal perspectives on the blueprint and tell us about the, you know, how they've used it, the importance of the context when using Prime, within their organization or within their region. And before q and I'll ask each panelist for a final answer to this question. So without further ado, I'd like to invite each of our panelists to uh, introduce themselves. And I'll start with Yaprak Anadol from Dubai Business School. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Yaprak and I'm an assistant professor in Dubai Business School. Um, I'm teaching marketing uh, and business and society courses, and at the moment I'm chairing the PRME committee in our school, and I'm very happy to be with you, uh, with you today uh, for being part of this great initiative. Thank you. And over to Mohan Abari in Malaysia. Hello everybody, wonderful to be on this panel. Uh, my name is Mohan. I'm an associate professor of strategy and innovation, uh, which both of which are underpinned by sustainability in the business school. I'm also director of research in the Malaysia campus, and I, I spear the, spearhead the prime initiatives in this campus. Uh, looking forward to this session. And over to Evgenia Pashkevich, IBS Ranepa. Hello, my name is Evgenia Pashkevich, and I'm associate dean at the Institute of Business Studies of Ranepa. And Ranipa is the biggest Russian university. Our school is located in Moscow. We have been a prime signatory almost since the very beginning of the initiative. And uh, for the last four years, we also have been a member of the Prime Champions Group, uh, which is a group of schools that are especially committed to responsible management education. Um, so SDG Blueprint is one of the deliverables of our joint action in this Prime Champions Group in the previous cycle. And um, um, I think it's a great document. My hope is for more schools to use it. So the purpose of this session, as Alec explained, uh, is to help promote the blueprint and show its potential. And I'm looking forward uh, to this session. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Evgenia. And last but not least, Laura Steele in Belfast. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alec. My name is Laura Steele and I'm a lecturer in business and society at Queen's Management School in Belfast, where I also serve as the Prime Champion. So we joined Prime four years ago this month. So compared to certainly Alec and Eugenia, we're quite early um, in our journey. We became a champion school in January of 2020, which has been a really useful opportunity to engage further with Prime and also to learn from our colleagues around the world. We're also an active member of the UK and Ireland chapter, um, which has grown dramatically over the last uh, several years to over 90 members so there's a thriving community in the UK and Ireland and we're fortunate to be part of that so thank you Alec. Thank you uh, dear panelists and uh, I hope the audience sees the global scope of what you're going to be 
listening to today. Um, so in the next step, I'm just going to try and share a few points and recap on the uh, SDG blueprint for, SD, for integration in curriculum research and partnerships um, for those of you who've not seen it or to refresh the memory of those who've taken a look at it in the past. So just give me a moment to share my screen here. Right, so now what I'm going to try and do is just provide um, followers and readers with an overview of the uh, prime blueprint for SDG integration. I would imagine that some on the call will be familiar with it, but others may not be. So I'm just gonna do a, a quick run through on it. Um, as Evgeny I mentioned, the prime blueprint was published in 2020, and that was almost five years after adoption of the SDGs by the UN. And it's an output of the Prime Champions Group. And what we tried to do was take examples of what schools around the world have been doing in between 2016 and 2019, try and capture those and put together the examples and some frameworks to help colleagues who were only just starting the journey. Now, the purpose of the blueprint is twofold, really. Um, first of all, we provide a set of concepts and frameworks to help colleagues with this job of integrating the SDGs into educational activities in their business schools. And secondly, we want this, we intended this blueprint to have a very practical focus. And for that reason, within the 50 page document, we've got a range of examples of SDG integration in the curriculum, SDG integration in research, and SDG integration in partnerships. I really would like to emphasize this point that the blueprint's not intended to be some normative or prescriptive tool. It provides a range of options and it's based on real life experience from prime signatories around the world. Now, this is the overview of the prime SDG compass. And as you can see, it maps out a four stage process. So it keeps it nice and simple. And what we've found from speaking to people working on SDG integration is that the chances of success are going to be far higher if a systematic approach is actually adopted. So these four steps represent that uh, systematic approach. And one thing we've learned uh, very early on is that to succeed, you actually need quite a bit of uh, buy-in from different stakeholders. So experience tells us that commitment is a key success factor for SDG integration. Now, the slide you're looking at here is not a linear model. It's not intended to portray top-down, uh, but rather SDG integration is often initiated um, on the right side by individual academics, and they persuade the senior management teams to actually put their weight and put resources behind SDG integration. Uh, and so what we're trying to portray here is that SDG integration needs full commitment and buy-in from a various range of stakeholders within the business school um, environment, whether that's top-down or bottom-up. Now, a key stage within the four-step model is mapping. And experience tells us that everyone tells us that mapping SDGs in curriculum research and partnerships is the first and most fundamental step. Now, again, because we're emphasizing that the blueprint is not a prescriptive uh, model, there are different ways of doing this. So prime signatories around the world have told us that they maybe have started with SDG integration in the curriculum, or they've started with partnerships, or they've started with SDGs in research, and then they may have graduated to uh, encapsulate a broader range. And at the same time, sometimes they've done it on an individual level, individual academics looking at how they're incorporating SDGs into their own teaching or into their own research, or it can be done at the level of a degree program, or it can be done 
the level of an academic department within the business school. Or of course, if you want to go the full bang, you can actually do SDG integration across the whole business school. So there are a variety of options here that we talk about in the blueprint. Now, in step one of the blueprint, understanding where we are is the first step, and that relates to mapping. And between 2016 and 2020, what we've seen colleagues around the world doing is using one of three different approaches. The, the most common approach used for SDG mapping is what we call simple mapping. And what this, this is, is looking at the icon, looking at the 17 icons of the SDGs and simply looking for some sort of um, association between whatever activity is taking part in the school and that SDG. The second uh, way that colleagues are going about SDG mapping is taking a selection of key words and using an Excel spreadsheet or artificial intelligence in order to um, run this through the module catalog. And the third uh, way that we see colleagues around the world doing SDG mapping is by taking the 169 targets or some of them because each SDG has a specific list and taking those targets and trying to map their research or curriculum or partnerships directly against these, um, these SDG targets. And that's perhaps the most complex and challenging. And we discuss these in more detail in the blueprint document. Now, of course, after mapping's done, that naturally leads us to step two. And step two is defining priorities and setting goals. So when mapping allows us to determine where we are, that then allows us to see where our strengths are, where we're doing a lot of stuff related to the SDGs and where there are gaps. So what we can then do is decide whether we want to uh, deepen or broaden SDG integration and we can set ourselves goals for the next year, three years, or five years. In step three of the blueprint, uh, what we can then do is once we've set goals, is decide how we're actually going to go about either deepening or broadening SDG integration. Are we going to integrate it into existing activities, degree programs, modules? Uh, are we going to focus on specific SDGs or are we going to adopt a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary approach to this task. So again, it's not, not about one size fits all, it's about looking at the institution, looking at its strengths and defining an SDG integration strategy that is fit for purpose. And finally, step four of the blueprint is really about measuring our impact and for that reason, in the blueprint document, we've got a section on communicating what an organization is doing in terms of SDG integration, in terms of measuring impact, um, and looking at plans for the future. Because like most things we do in Prime, in the sharing information on progress report, what we're, what we're trying to do is each two years that we report, we want to actually map that progress. So um, that's the overview for those of you who are not familiar with it and a refresh for those of you who are. Uh, we would encourage you to download the blueprint. You can go to the um, pavilion uh, associated with this session to get a copy of that. Um, if you'd like to contribute to further development of the blueprint repositories that we are developing, please do get in touch. Now, now we've actually gone through the uh, overview to refresh our memories on where we are. I'd now like to invite uh, each of the panelists to give their personal perspectives, uh, personal perspective, institutional perspective, and perhaps regional perspective on the blueprint. And to start with, I'd like to invite Yaprak Anadol from Dubai Business School 
uh, to say a few words. Uh, yeah, Prak. Thank you so much. And a great overview. Um, actually, uh, what is uh, the PRME blueprint uh, is an alternative framework or a roadmap for schools, uh, especially uh, for the ones who are at the beginning of their um, their their um, membership processes. So also it can be used uh, for other schools who are already integrated to SDGs um, to uh, align their SDG um, activities uh, in a certain framework that can be comparable with the others. And um, especially during the formation of the Middle East chapter, uh, the members uh, schools uh, can use the blueprint as the regional level to create a standard uh, and practical repository that contains the best practices and offers some collaboration opportunities targeting the SDGs, which are relevant to the regional context. And sometimes um, we are, we are uh, looking for, um, you know, like some uh, different SDG engagement, and it is a good source of uh, information for that. And as the uh, University of Dubai, um, we are one of the champions and we have already been engaged uh, a lot of activities, uh, the sustainability and SDG related activities. And actually uh, the blueprint uh, can help us to uh, better integrate the SDGs, especially the uh, areas that we are, uh, we need improvement because uh, putting on the, on the things in the framework shows us what are missing in our implementation. And also we can use them to uh, set the goals when we are preparing the SIP reports. And uh, this is the basic piece of fr framework. Uh, and it also uh, may help the, um, the uh, schools uh, to find out the ways to uh, communicate better uh, internally and externally about the blueprint and with the management. So we can easily uh, see the ways how the other schools are communicating the blueprint um, and integrate the SDGs into curriculum research and uh, partnership. And you know, like which ways they are following when they are communicating with the uh, collegial level in, uh, with the other faculty and um, with the management as well. So this could be a good um, alternative um, uh, method for us. And um, basically, um, the benefit is uh, it's all about uh, sharing the experiences and um, get the help from each other uh, when we put our um, when we put our um, SDG integration. And it creates a common language maybe across the schools, and yet it is flexible, so each institution can get whatever they need, as you mentioned during your overview. And there are some challenges involved, I believe. And these uh, challenges may be overcome by um, understanding the blueprint better, as you, you mentioned, it's a long document. And you know, like, um, and especially uh, the slides that you have provided was a good tool to understand it in a brief way uh, to move forward towards the SDGs. I think that's all I say. Thank you so much for that. Th th thank you, Yaprak. Yeah, and um, you, you mentioned that the blueprint is a comprehensive document, it's 50 pages long. Um, but what I would also like to highlight is we have an executive summary of the blueprint, and that is only four to five pages long. And that's something that perhaps may be good to use with deans and the like. Uh, thank you, Yaprak. Let's move on to, from the Middle East, let's move on to Asia and Mohan Avari, I'm down in Malaysia. Uh, Mo, Mohan, can you please share your personal and uh, regional perspectives on the blueprint? I'll start with a personal perspective, Alec. Uh, as I've always told you, I work with an accountant who loves blueprints, uh, KPIs and such things. And I'm the exact opposite. I don't like reporting. I'm not a rebel, but uh, anything confining is very annoying. Uh, but the blueprint has been, has been a... a a document that's brought two of us together. So I suppose within school, when you're talking, a business school is a very diverse school, unlike let's say sociology or despite the schools of thought. I saw it at the first level, integrating the two of us running the show, the prime show within the business school. That's the individual view. So for those of you who are like me and don't like numbers, 
and don't like reporting, especially when we have a smorgasbord of ASCSBs, equises, SIP reports. This is, this is a document that made life very comfortable. That's a personal view. Institutionally, um, and I, I'm in the context of Malaysia, uh, the Nottingham University Business School uh, is based out of UK, and then they have a China campus. We couldn't be as different uh, as, as similar we are. And how do we get these three campuses to talk to each other? How do we report? Uh, China has certain SDGs in its interest. We have certain SDGs. Our context is very different. Uh, and I think this blueprint has sort of very inherently brought us together. Uh, we are, uh, one of the examples is the mapping methodologies that you took, the simple one versus the complex one uh, and the in-between intermediary. So the NUBS or the business school is looking at the intermediary state now for our curriculum how to see which colleague is doing what in the, day, in the 100 plus modules across the three campuses. So different institutional settings, each individual has his own way of running a module. And this, this blueprint has been fantastically helpful. And now let me come down to Malaysia. Uh, this is the nation that has started reporting on the SDGs, the very important institution for businesses. The stock exchange uses the SDG compass and has, a, has narratives very similar to the blueprint. So, I mean, if you're a business school and you're working with the industry and, and here's a blueprint that gets all colleagues to talk the language, it, it's a personal view, but I think it's very strong. Uh, there's also the typologies of partnerships that I like a lot, the 15th, around the 13th slide in your slides. But uh, anyway, for those who are looking at the blueprint, that would be the typologies of partnerships. In, in one diagram, it's so beautiful to see how your school could partner or if you're already partnering, how you could report on and build on it. And as Yaprak was talking uh, about the issue of where you are, a reflection document, I think there are multiple uses for it. Um, and again, the life cycle of how you are on the SDG side, uh, the Malaysia campus is relatively small and uh, nascent in terms of what we do. Lots of individuals do great work, but we've not been very strategic. Whereas UK has always been very defined and now we are integrating with them on this. So two schools, same institution, and yet we are able to get together with the SDT framework. And the last point for me, uh, we are on the, in the cusp of starting off a Malaysia chapter. And I think the blueprint now offers a, a document where all of us could talk similarly. And coming from Prime and Global Compact makes it very comfortable to get the chapter going. Uh, I'll, I'll stop with that, uh, Alec, thank you. Wow, Mohan, uh, well, thank you so much. I. I mean, what, what's amazing about what you've just shared with us is the, if you like, the transnational perspective on this and perhaps the power of the blueprint to bring people together as a, <clears throat> as a, a heuristic device and something that you can talk about and debate and argue about. <laughs> and, and the other point I think was lovely was that you, it's the different perspectives. So depending on the context, you'll have a different approach. Well, um, Let's leave Asia and come back to where Europe ends and Asia begins in a way, and that's uh, Russia. You're a huge continent. You're both European and Asian, Evgenia. In you come, please. Yes, so um, thank you, Alec. Uh, thank you for your great presentation. Also, I would like to thank Mo and Yaprak for their comments. So some of the things I was going to say you know, have already been said, but uh, still I would like to repeat uh, maybe a little bit what, what has been mentioned that uh, for many schools who are already on their journey to SDG integration, this document may be useful, but it may not necessarily uh, be compulsory, mandatory. Uh, in fact, many of these schools have helped to prepare it and have shared their experience, which is incorporated in this document. But there are many schools that are ready to start working on SDG integration. Uh, they're not always know how, and for them, it might be very helpful. And the blueprint shows different stages of such integration. Uh, and this is very important. It provides specific examples of action. Um, so next, I would like uh, to share a little bit my feelings uh, about our national context. Uh, so in our national context, that is in Russia, I think this document can be very useful. At this point, not many schools are aware of it, uh, primarily because Russian schools are only starting uh, to become part of the prime community. Uh, at this point of time, we have 12 schools that are signatories of prime and many of them have joined prime just recently. 
Uh, and uh, another reason that is often disregarded is that English is not necessarily a working language in countries other than the US, the UK, and some countries in, in Western Europe. Uh, so the fact that this document is in English and it's long and comprehensive document might present an additional obstacle to using it. So the first thing that we at, at the Institute of Business Studies as a prime champion school plan to do is to have it translated into the Russian language. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're planning to have a workshop not unlike the session that we're having now to promote this document in Russia, where the um, situation uh, is exactly, as I said before, many schools feel the need to start the integration of SDGs and need guidance and examples. Um, right now, I think the SDG integration in many schools in our country is limited to standalone courses on sustainability and some research uh, but this research is often driven by individual commitment uh, rather than by the uh, by institutional strategy. Um, so a few words about specific benefits I see in using the blueprint. Uh, different schools have very different resources. I think it's important to understand. While some have dedicated staff and funds allocated to those activities, there are schools that have to rely on few and maybe one part-time staff and very little funding. Uh, but mm -hmm. still the commitment and the intention for promoting uh, responsible management education principles and SDGs is there. So what the blueprint, the blueprint offers different scenarios from little steps on an individual level uh, for schools with limited resources to comprehensive integration of SDGs into all aspects of a school's activities, including multi-stakeholder and cross-sectoral partnerships. So it's very important to take the little steps uh, and do what you can, because with time it will lead to, to bigger ones. Um, and finally, um, one of the questions that we as panelists were asked to reflect on was what challenges do you see in using the blueprint? So as I said earlier, there is a technical obstacle of the language barrier that can be overcome. Uh, some schools may be a little bit intimidated by the depth and complexity of the document, uh, and others may see it as a benchmark that must be achieved. So it's important for them to understand that the document's purpose is guidance and assistance uh, to schools and that it's not a prescriptive or normative document. So schools may use any part of the document, however small it might be, but the most important thing is to start using it. So uh, thank you for your attention. That's all I wanted to say. Well, th thank you so much, um, Evgenia. You've made some brilliant points there. I think some of the key ones that uh, I picked out, you know, this idea of you've got sort of vet veterans of SDGs and, and the newbies, the ones that are just starting out the journey. Uh, but I love your point on action. You know, the, the, the point about making these little steps and creating action, because I suppose there's a limit to how much we're going to talk about these things, isn't there? And we need to actually do it. And as we gather experience, I think we can share these. Um, and that's very much in the prime spirit of collegiality and, and sharing. Um, I, I think you've given us uh, also lessons to learn in terms of inclusion and, and translation and not forgetting that uh, we can't use English everywhere. So I love your um, proactive approach to getting this translated and perhaps we could do it uh, in Mandarin and, and maybe Arabic and Spanish um, to actually follow and broaden the reach. Um, let's switch now from, again, from uh, where Europe and Asia merge, let's swing to the sort of um, the Atlantic, and we'll go over to Belfast to Laura Steele at Queen's Management School. Laura. Thank you so much, Alec. Goodness, what can I really add after um, those really interesting and important contributions, particularly in relation to the language issue? And hopefully by this time next year, we might see you know, a number of iterations of the blueprint in different languages so it's more accessible globally. 
All I can say is that I wish I had access to this document back in 2017, whenever we joined Prime. It's really been put together by a team of people who've been involved with the organisation and are highly knowledgeable about the SDGs. And so certainly from my perspective, it can be really hard to know where to start whenever you join Prime, either as an institution, but equally as we've seen that you know, over a period of years, often new people will step into the role of Prime Champion or Prime Lead within a school. And that can be quite daunting and I've certainly met people you know at conferences or other venues who've taken on that position and they don't know where to start and now we can offer them a blueprint as a really useful document you to engage with Prime and the SDGs. So as I'd mentioned really at the outset, the UK and Ireland chapter is fairly well developed. We have over 90 members and some of those members have been involved in Prime since its inception but we still have new members joining um, on an almost a monthly basis and again we can direct them to the blueprint as a resource but even for you know for six signatories that are extensively involved in prime as a number of other people have highlighted you know this isn't a normative document it's not prescriptive my view on it is that it's not a case of either or but and you can use the blueprint alongside whatever other methodology you've developed within your school it's supplementary to it rather than a replacement of it and equally you might have some feedback on the blueprint that you can um, give back to prime so that we can continue to develop it and um, going forward in terms of our institution the big challenge that we tend to face around time pressures and um, on the part of staff and lack of access to data but again I think the blueprint particularly that executive summary that a number of people have highlighted is really useful the main document is about 50 pages but the executive summary and even the slides which are going to be shared you know are really accessible and somebody could read through them you know within about 15 or 20 minutes at most and get a good sense of what the blueprint is about so really, and within the UK and Ireland chapter, I do still think that there's a lot of scope to raise awareness of the, um, the profile of the blueprint. I do wonder whether as a result of when it was launched um, during the global pandemic in, in June of last year, whether it escaped a few people's attention um, as a result. And so I think something that we need to do over the next six months to a year is just to continue to make people aware of it. So we're gonna try and do that in the UK and Ireland chapter conference, which is next month. I've also been looking at ways to integrate it elsewhere within the chapter so for example we have a pedagogy competition which we run on an annual basis and we now have hyperlinked um, a copy of the blueprint into the documents associated with the competition so people can go and draw upon that to develop their application and um, for some funding to develop some new pedagogy initiatives and I'm also hoping to organize a workshop within our own institution at Queen's in terms of integrating the SDGs and we're going to use the blueprint as the framework for that in terms of the benefits, I think one thing to really point out is that it is full of hyperlinks to examples from other institutions. So I've had so much inspiration just by clicking on some of those and seeing what is happening in other parts of the world. And you, know, you can take all or part of those ideas and integrate them to your own institution. And it's a really useful way as well to engage colleagues to decide to people, have you seen this document? And um, there might be some information in this that is useful for you in terms of the programs or the modules that you're delivering. So again, I think just in, in terms of the challenges going forward, it is going to be related to that time pressure issue. So I think it's really important to go to our colleagues with quick wins and solutions um, that we can offer to them. And again, that's where the blueprint, I think, can be really useful. I don't think we need to sell people on the SDGs or sustainability more broadly in a way that we probably needed to do four or five years ago. I think there's much greater awareness around the challenges of student sustainability, particularly in relation to you know, the problem of climate climate change and so as a result I think that there's an appetite there for um, documents like the blueprint that people want to take it on board but they just sometimes need that entry point and I think that's where the blueprint again is a really good selling point is that um, it's a really accessible document. So I'm really excited to, you know, to the direction of travel that we're headed in and where we might be in a year's time, particularly if we do have it translated into a number of other languages so that it's open to a much greater section of the prime community. So thank you for organizing this session today, Alec. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Well, thank you, Laura, for giving those fabulous insights from your, your, your personal role at uh, Queen's Management School, where I see you're doing a great job, but also within the, uh, within the UK and Ireland uh, chapter. Um, I wonder if um, I could just ask very briefly um, whether um, you could give us a, an example, very brief, 
on SDG integration in the curriculum or research or partnerships from your own school. Um, Mo, I'm going to come to you on partnerships. Uh, could, could I ask you, you, you know, SDG integration in partnerships and what you're doing out in Malaysia on that? Very briefly, please. Well, we've just embarked on an MOU with Global Compact Malaysia. And in the past year, the, the collaborations have been sporadic, but moving forward now, we want to sit down, use the blueprint and see how we can sort of synergize and so that we can also report, and as was pointed out, even the impact, what kind of impact we have, uh, uh, this document is going to be used and to see how we create impact as partners and individually. Great, I mean, of course, I mean, that's a really interesting example with the UN Global Compact, uh, because as we know, in, the, in our prime strategy uh, for the next few years, uh, tightening this relationship and partnership with the Global Compact is um, absolutely important. Uh, Evgenia, I'm wondering if I could come to you. Uh, could you share with us an example on curriculum, SDG integration in the curriculum? Okay, so, uh, you know, it's difficult to, to choose which one, but I guess the, the most recent one, uh, you know, and actually it came through our participation in Prime. Uh, so this maybe is a, is a good example in this respect. Uh, we sent a, a number of our faculty and staff to take the carbon literacy training. Mm. Uh, and actually, we, we have been working this year with the carbon literacy project, and we're making this a compulsory part of our bachelor curriculum. Wow. So actually, all our bachelor students will be taking this training as part of the a bigger course on sustainability mindset. So they will not have all to pay and get certificates. That will be voluntary. If they want, they can do that. But they will have to take the training, all of them. So I think it's, that's, that's a very good initiative. Wow, fabulous. I mean, and obviously with COP26 coming up and everything, I mean, I, I think the uh, students will love that. But making it a, a requirement for all grad, all students is absolutely fabulous. Um, Laura, could I come to you? What about SDG integration in research? Is there anything you can share from Queen's Management School on that? That's probably one of our biggest challenges. So I could probably give you more straightforward answers in terms of curriculum and partnerships. But in regard to research, tracking research has, has been one of our initial challenges, just because of the variety of work that is happening across the school. And so we use Pure, um, which I know that many other institutions around the world use as well. Um, and so what we did was within Pure, you can tag research. And so we created tags related to Prime and to the Sustainable Development development goals. But again, we're still quite early in that process and you know, not everybody is tagging their research. But again, I would hope that over the next 12 months, that would be more, um, much more commonplace. Um, Pure themselves, I believe, have also integrated now the sustainable development goals. And so um, now you can tag yourself at an individual level in terms of what areas you're involved in within the SDG. So I think there's a degree that will happen automated, but you can go in yourself and then highlight what particular areas you believe that you're contributing to in terms terms of research so for us, it started off as quite a manual process of going through um, of going through um, literally so publication by publication and trying to make an assessment in terms of what, if any, SDGs that was related to. Um, but hopefully we're going to use technology to become um, more automated in that regard and get a better picture in terms of research. But again, our university has now introduced funding related to the Sustainable Development Goals from the Central University and some colleagues have been applying to take advantage of that. So I think it just speaks to um, a wider um, a wider focus on the sustainable development goals um, and a realization of how important they're going to be over the next decade. Well, thank you, uh, Laura. And uh, I love the idea of tagging. You know, I think these are little tips that as we develop uh, further um, additions of the blueprint, you know, we're going to add these things because I think these are very practical tips, aren't they? And the digital transformation of how we actually uh, track these things, it'll help us with measuring impact. Okay, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to come back to um, the, the each speaker and I'd like us to come up with a, a final one minute. What advice would you give to our colleagues in the global responsible management education community and to prime colleagues, uh, which now numbers nearly 900? What advice would you give them in your final one minute um, uh, contribution. 
Uh, could I ask uh, maybe Yaprak to come back in? Your final point, what would be your advice, Yaprak? You're muted, Yaprak. Thank you. Um, I think this is the journey that we are already uh, eventually is going to take it. And it's a great guideline is uh, just laying in front of us so we can walk through this path and um, we can we can have more uh, practices and we can learn more about it and we can share our experiences uh, towards our integration because as you said Ali it's uh, all everything is about sharing uh, so walk through together and no one is left behind so uh, by the way uh, here I would like to use the opportunity if anyone is interested uh, there will be a lifetime SDG blueprint introduction session and feedback session tomorrow um, in for the Eastern Hemisphere time zone, and it will take place uh, on Thursday, 17, as we said, tomorrow at 4.40 p.m. Melbourne time. It's 10.40 a.m. Dubai time. And, you know, like if you can follow, you can easily track them from the uh, Global Forum uh, schedules. And maybe we will see you guys there, everyone there, uh, to share their opinions in this live session. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, thank, you. thank you. And over to Mo, Malaysia. Could I come back to Mo? Your final point. What's your advice uh, to colleagues? Uh, I'll try two points very quickly. I like Ivania's point on the resources. Uh, and, and within our own school, I'm small with less resources. UK has a lot of sort of dedicated resources, dedicated resources. This blueprint is brilliant that way. It's a piecemeal, you can plug and play. Uh, tag your research, etc. And second point, uh, we have to emphasize it all the five of us, it's not a compliance document. It's not a reporting framework, it's a guide. And it, it's a beautiful guide to bring different players at different levels to work together. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Mo, for that. Uh, I've certainly taken note of your advice, the great things there. Evgenia, could I come back to you, please? Well, I have, uh, I have a very simple advice, really. Uh, read the document first, okay? So maybe <laughs> I thought the version that the executive summary that we have, and not just read, it's important to, you know, to share it with, at least with some of the colleagues. So this collegiate approach is very important. So share it with those people who are committed to the SDG agenda and decide together what you can, uh, how you can use that in, at your school. Lovely. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I certainly resonate to uh, uh, support your call to action there, Evgenia. And and finally, Laura, on this, what, what would be a final word and advice to colleagues uh, thinking about the group blueprint? What, what would you say to them? Um, I'm going to I'm going to give a cliche, I'm afraid, Alec, but I would say strive for progress and not perfection. And um, mm. that we're all we're all on a journey, as several people have highlighted with this. And um, you know, so don't feel as if you have to do everything at once. And that's again another another lovely thing about the blueprint is that it's incremental in approach. And so there's no suggestion that you need to be at the highest level from the outset. It's something that you can work towards over a period of years. And the other thing that I would say again that people have highlighted is that you're part of a community in Prime, and people are are very receptive to you getting in contact with them. So if you see something. In the blueprint or somewhere else within the prime community and you think that sounds like a really good idea and i might be able to use it at my institution email that person and engage with them i certainly have done that over the last number of years and i've only had positive responses so you're part of a community make use of that community there's a lot of very willing and helpful people out there wow wonderful well uh, what can i say i can't really add much to that i'm going to at this stage just thank you all um, Yaprak Anadol from Dubai, Laura Steele from Belfast, Mohan Avari from Nottingham University Business School in Malaysia, and Evgenia Pashkovich at the Institute of Business School, Ranepa in Moscow. I see I got it right that time, Evgenia. Look, oh. final, final word from me, it's UN decade of action. You know, we've got 10 years to ensure that we meet these SDGs, so let's uh, use the SDG blueprint to push the SDGs as deep as we can and as broadly as we can within our business school and maybe beyond it. And we look forward to the questions and answers from our audience. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you.